and British people who say Cluedo. Does anyone have a Cluedo? Why it's called Cluedo? Hey guys, welcome back to the Girl Gun London channel. If you're new here, my name is Kaylin. I'm a dual American and UK citizen, and today, in the darkness of my room as the sun is setting in the English winter, we are going over some of the least talked about differences between the UK and the US. In this video, we are talking about some of those minute differences between countries. We're not talking healthcare, we're not talking the police system, we're not talking geography. We are talking smaller things. I've just done a video on this similar topic recently, so you can check that out at the link below if you like this kind of video. So the first difference has to do with a game show. And actually, I've just thought of two differences. So originally I had seven, and I might still title this video Seven Differences, but I'm gonna give you a bonus eight. So the first one is, in the US, we have a game show called Family Feud. In the UK, it is a not the same game show. It is a separate show influenced by the American show, but it is called Family Fortune. Like I said, they're not exactly the same show, um, but they are the same exact concept. And if you're not familiar with it, basically, uh, families or groups of friends come on the show as competing teams and they're asked to give answers to a question that the game show people have asked an audience of like 100 people. If you answer with the most popular answers, you win. So like I said, if you say family feud in the US, people will understand in the US what you're talking about, but if you're in the UK, say family fortune because that's their version. It's called family fortune in the UK. Now, another game um, terminology that I just thought of as I was doing this was in the US, we have a game called Clue. You've got, you know, the like, what's his name? It's not like Sergeant Pepper, but that's all I can think. Someone's in the, in the living room with a wrench and that's how they did the crime. And you know, you go through the whole thing and you figure out who done it. We call that Clue. In the UK, same game, but it's called Cluedo. I have not ever figured out why it's called Cluedo as opposed to Clue, um, but it is, it's called Cluedo. So if people say Cluedo to you as Americans, they're talking about Clue. And British people who say Cluedo, does anyone have a Cluedo, why it's called Cluedo? Okay, so the next difference is property tax versus council tax. So again, we're really getting into those differences that you wouldn't know if you didn't live in both countries or had an experienced life in both countries. You don't have to live in them simultaneously. So council tax in the UK pays for essentially the same things as property tax with a few differences, but depending on what country you're from, property tax, council tax kind of pay for the similar kinds of things. But council tax, in the UK is usually much less expensive than property tax in the US. Property tax in the US can be very high depending on what state, what county you live in. Um, if you live in rural Oklahoma, you're gonna be paying less in property tax than if you live in Malibu, for instance. And I know Brits will say, yes, we have our own council tax bans and people with more expensive houses will pay more money. Um, so it, it does differ in that sense, but if you live in the north of England, you don't necessarily pay a higher percentage of council tax, as far as I'm aware, as if you live in the south of England, where in the US, the the not just the bans, but the entire amount that you pay can differ from place to place. And the other differences between property tax and council tax is that council tax is paid by the resident. So if you are renting from somebody, you are responsible for having your own council tax bill that you will pay for. So you will register with the council as the resident of that location and you will be in charge. In the US, the property tax bill is paid by the homeowner. Of course, if you're renting, they're gonna be passing this off to you in your rent, but you are not able to, you're not going to be paying somebody else's property taxes. So prop in terms of actually physically paying that bill. The property taxes are tied to the homeowner and council tax is tied to just whoever is living in the home. So if you own a home in the UK, but you're renting it out, somebody else is paying the council tax. You are not paying the council tax for that location. 
Okay, so the next difference has to do with the location of the bathroom light switch. So if you have an actual switch to turn on the bathroom light, it is going to be located outside of the bathroom in the UK. In the US, it's going to be inside the bathroom. So I have been in bathrooms in the UK that have like a pull cord to turn it on. That's considered another safe way of actually having something in the bathroom. But again, the only thing exposed inside the bathroom is just this dangly cord. Like there's nothing exposed. So if you have a switch, like a light switch that you would turn on and off, like a normal switch you would think of, in the US, you're going to find that switch inside the bathroom. You can close the door and find it in the bathroom. If you're in the UK, you need to turn on that switch or turn off the switch outside the bathroom. There's not going to be a switch on the wall inside a UK bathroom. And this is due to the higher UK voltage and just general uh, safety standards that they have in the UK due to this high voltage. So the next difference that you might not know about is what we call the meals that we eat at a restaurant. So I'm not talking about breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I'm talking about your, what Americans would call appetizer, entree, and dessert. In the UK, you're more commonly going to hear starter for appetizer, main for the entree, and uh, pudding for dessert. So I've done whole other videos, Pudding is a general catch-all concept for dessert in the UK. You can have pudding for pudding in the UK. In America, pudding specifically is this that I have on my screen right now. So again, if somebody goes to a UK restaurant, maybe you're a visitor to the UK from the US, um, and you see a menu, you are going to see starters, mains, and puddings. And you can order a pudding that could be anything from a cake to a pie, to ice cream, it simply means dessert. So don't be too confused if your waiter or waitress asks what you'd like for pudding. Now we're almost done here because as I said at the start of the video, the light is drawing thin and I have, genuinely I have the light on in here and I have like other like studio filming lights and it still is just getting darker and darker. Thank you, Mid Terrace Home. So our second to last difference are the types of deodorants that are most common in the UK versus the US. So in the US, the most common type of deodorant is a stick deodorant. I bought this one in the UK and it is very small compared to one I'd have in the US. It was the only option because um, while you can find these, uh, which is basically a solid stick on top, it doesn't seem to be the deodorant of choice for a lot of people living in the UK. Instead, I have noticed a lot of people using either a liquid roll-on, I'll put an example here of what that might look like, as well as actual spray deodorant. Spray deodorant is very unfamiliar to a lot of Americans. We really, we really think of most deodorants as a stick deodorant in the US. Um, that's not to say that you can't buy anything else, but stick solid deodorants dominate as opposed to the UK. I would say that the kind of liquidy or spray deodorants actually dominate. So this is something to keep in mind if you're visiting either country, um, particularly for expats. Like I said, I can buy stick deodorant here, but they tend to be smaller and I tend to actually bring deodorant back from the US because I can buy it cheaper and I have more options for the type that I like, which is again, one of those small things that I feel like nobody really talks about in these videos when describing the US and UK, because it requires you to have lived a life where you have actually attempted to buy deodorant in both countries. Now our final difference some of you might be more familiar with, but this is the concept of bedding in the US and the UK. So in the UK, you have your fitted bottom sheet, and that is your only sheet. On top of that, you have what's called your duvet. Your duvet is not meant to be used without the duvet cover. So the duvet cover is essentially just like a sheet that kind of you put your duvet in and you seal it up. Um, so it is a cover for the duvet, but the, con the not the consistency, but the feel of a duvet cover is similar to a sheet. In the US, we have the bottom fitted sheet, same as the UK. Then we have a top sheet. So a top sheet 
is basically the same um, the same feeling as the bottom sheet, but it doesn't have the, the scrunchy sides. It's just a completely flat sheet tucked into the bed, goes on top. You sleep under the top sheet and on top of the top sheet is what we call a comforter. Now, this is very a basic breakdown. So if you look it up and it's slightly different to this, don't come for me. This is just general usage. A comforter typically is not going to have a cover. So comforters that I had growing up or that you might find at a hotel or someone's house, they can be washed typically in like a laundromat or with a professional. Sometimes they can go in your washing machine, but they're not meant to be washed every day. They're not meant to be washed after every use or once a week or anything like that. Because the idea is you have the top sheet that separates you from this comforter. I have to say I much prefer the UK duvet because I'm kind of a germaphobe. And so having this, having a comforter for myself, if it's just me using it, fine, I don't care. But obviously going to hotels and stuff, I don't want to be touching a comforter that has not been washed regularly because it probably isn't in a hotel. So a American top sheet exists where a British top sheet doesn't because American comforters don't have covers, whereas British duvets do. Okay, so that brings me to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed these differences. As always, let me know if any of them surprised you, which one surprised you the most. Um, and I would love to hear suggestions for other differences that you'd like me to include in future videos because I'm really trying to become a space on YouTube where you can learn something that you actually didn't know about the UK versus the US. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.